the new plan to help small local businesses at the container park attract shoppers. Yeah, and it lets you kind of be part of a new interactive art installation there. 13 Action News reporter Kelsey McFarland joins us live from downtown to show us what it's all about. Good morning, Kelsey. Good morning, ladies. Yeah, in the heart of the arts district, you get to be the artist and you can help a room just inside these gates here at the container park evolve. It's designed to create a more community driven experience and give a boost to those small businesses. At Jojo's Jerky, bringing the community in and attracting locals is everything. It's very important because it being a smaller business, it's harder for us to keep customers coming to us. The Container Park's newest pixel sticker room is designed to do just that. A crisp white room transformed by splashes of color, all by the design of the community. I mean, it's a really unique part of this space. A piano, a bookshelf, a table, and chairs fill this living room setting, now painted with dotted designs and positive messages. Here's how it works. When you make a purchase within the park, you receive a sticker. Um, depending on how much you spend, the more stickers you get. And just to come in, in here and just um, add to this crisp white room and just make it more colorful. The evolving art room is family friendly. My daughter loves it. And Instagram worthy. Hashtag uh, pixel sticker room. So um, you'll see uh, different pictures and interactions from when guests have been here. Vegas residents say the new fixture brought them to stores they otherwise may not have visited. It's interesting to see how this whole space here at Container Park has transformed over the years and I think that this room itself is a real representation of that progress. Now the Pixel Sticker Room continues to evolve. The organizers are already talking about ways that they can change it and improve it. So next time you visit here, it may be different than the last time you saw it. Live in downtown, I'm Kelsey McFarland, 13 Action News. And Kelsey, it's just one of the ideas. You talked to some business owners down there who say, we're struggling. We need to get people back down here again. Absolutely. I mean, after a, a bout of break-ins and thefts, I think it's nice to have this morale boost for business owners too, and get some more people in there to give them some more of that business. Makes, makes a fun shopping experience. Kelsey, thank you. It's a project that's been the talk of the town for months since it was proposed, and now it's another step closer to becoming a reality. The City of Henderson Coun uh, Council, City Council, excuse me, approved a 20-year lease and development agreement with the Vegas Golden Knights to build a community ice hockey facility. It's exciting. The estimated $25 million facility will sit on just over three acres at the corner of Water Street and Atlantic Avenue, where the Henderson Convention Center currently sits. The plans call for two NHL regulation size ice rinks, a full service restaurant, along with retail and meeting space all inside. The facility won't replace City National as the official practice facility for the Knights, but it's meant to be a place for future Knights youth hockey leagues, tournaments and figure skating. The ability to connect to those kids that are playing those other sports and bring this great game of hockey to Henderson is an, it's a natural fit. Well, the Henderson Convention Center will be demolished this summer. Construction will start shortly after that, and a new facility will be open by July of 2020. So pretty cool. Did a segment yesterday on midday about new restaurants down there in the Water Street area, too. Yes. There's a lot coming in, mm -hmm. so it's exciting for uh, Henderson. Yes. New this morning, we are learning where Las Vegas ranks among top, the top 100 largest cities when it comes to access to parks. We came in at number 37. Washington, D.C. came out on top. The numbers were released by the Trust for Public Lands. They found over 70% of people living in big cities are within a 10-minute walk of a park. Here in Las Vegas, there are more than 100 parks operated by Clark County alone. You can find a full list on ClarkCounty.gov. If you want to save money, there's a free option to stream movies or TV shows, and all you need is a library card. Yeah, the service is called Canopy, and it's similar to Netflix. The streaming service has more than 30,000 classic films, some recent features and documentaries. It works on your computer, phone, Roku, and Apple, and Fire TV. Like we said, the service is entirely free. You just need to enter your library card and PIN. It's our job as the library district to serve our customers, so we want to meet them where they're at, and that's why we're offering um, opportunities to stream content. This is really cool. You can check out the up to 10 titles a month, apparently, so you've got a lot of choice there.
A wild RV chase in Los Angeles. Yeah, a dog seen jumping out of a window in the middle of a pursuit, and that's not the only shocking thing that happened. And the colder weather means more pests crawling into your home. The simple things you can do to keep unwanted guests out. And colder is not just sort of a state of mind. I mean, it's 26 degrees below average. My forecast high today, just 65 degrees. We'll talk about the timing of the rain and the storm chances, and we'll let you know when 80s are back with the seven day planner. In the Midwest this morning, a weather emergency as more than 30 tornadoes touched down across the plains. But the biggest concern right now is the life threatening floods. The conditions only getting worse overnight. At least one person is dead after their car got swept away on a flooded road. Yesterday, rescuers helped trapped residents, firefighters pulling people out of submerged vehicles and swamped homes. We were inside when it blew over and it was scary. We got our wits about us enough to call 911 and they came and they broke out the back window, the emergency exit window and got us out of there. And to the east, the governor of Missouri declared a state of emergency after a severe storm caused major damage. Here at home, as cool temperatures creep in, unwanted critters are crawling out. That's right, especially because of the unseasonably cold temperatures. Well, pests like scorpions, ants, spiders, earwigs are becoming a bigger problem. Now, the unpredictable weather is bringing in fleas, apparently, too. Experts share some ways that you can protect your home and pets from those unwan unwanted pests. If you keep the bushes trimmed back on your grass, uh, keep the sprinkler system down, overwatering can cause pests to come out. They also recommend using flea tick and heartworm prevention because we are a highly traveled area. So good heads up. Let's get right over to Justin now. It's a 13 first alert action day because maybe some rain on the way, Justin. Uh, yeah, we're going to hold on to dry weather for our morning commute. So that's a, a decent start, even though it is chilly outside. But the possibility for a couple of passing showers and I can't rule out a passing thunder shower as we head from late morning into the afternoon, even on into parts of the evening. It's not going to be a washout. I don't think we'll have any flooding rains, uh, but when we do talk about rain chances here in Las Vegas, usually a big deal by lunchtime, we could see some downpours in the mountains to our north to our west and possibly even down to our south around Henderson. And those would be the focal points for some of the downpours through the afternoon neighborhoods that are near the mountains. Uh, but we can't rule out a shower passing through the valley either as we head into the evening, still looking at the chance of a couple of passing showers and it should be cold enough that in the highest parts of the mountains, especially uh, the spring mountains off to our west, there might be there likely will be some wet snow in the mix once you get up above 8,000 feet or so. Temperatures this morning, 58 degrees at McCarran. Highs today, this is, this is really something. 65 is the forecast. That's the average high for February the 22nd. It's May the 22nd. Normally it would be around 91 degrees. Uh, just not the case out there today. An unusually cool weather pattern keeping our forecast of 65 uh, way cooler than anything we've ever seen on May the 22nd. Weather records go back to the 1930s. Uh, the coldest May the 22nd we've got here in Las Vegas weather records, 73. That was back in 1971, so it is unusual for it to be this chilly this late into the month of May. Tonight, cold down to the upper 40s and the low 50s. Highs tomorrow struggling to eventually get back towards 70 degrees. Hey, at least our pollen levels should be dropping off with these cooler temperatures and these opportunities for some showers. Not much wind today. Tomorrow, some 25 mile per hour gusts. We are in the upper 70s on Friday, mid 80s on Saturday. So a weekend warm up. It's Memorial Day weekend. We'll drop back to the 70s on Monday, but other than an isolated shower on Sunday looks dry for this three day weekend. Anybody driving through the spaghetti bowl, there are a couple things you'll need to know about overnight tonight. The 95 southbound ramp to the 15 north will be closed overnight. Also, the MLK on ramp to the 15 north that will also be closed overnight tonight. So for both of these, here's what you can do. You can take MLK to Bonanza, hop onto the 15 north from D Street. 
Thanks, Marissa. A wild chase through the San Fernando Valley in California. Watch this, everyone. See this woman driving that RV. There are two dogs inside, and she led police through the streets of the valley. She smashed into a tree. You just saw that and hit two other cars. Finally, one of the dogs gets frightened and jumps out of the smashed front windshield and ran off. That poor thing. This finally ended when the RV crashed into that white car and then slammed into those trees. That wasn't enough, though. The woman got out and ran from police. Here's the most baffling part, at least to me. Uh, she wasn't in that much trouble before all of this happened. She was just wanted for failing to yield. Oh. She's in a lot of trouble now. Mm -hmm. Well, here in Nevada, we had our own share of vehicle pursuits last year. A report from Metro shows we had 50 last year alone. Metro's Office of Internal Oversight released the report yesterday. The department also says officers used force in 867 cases last year. 22 of those resulted in officer-involved shootings. Well, this morning, an update on some of those marijuana proposals we told you about yesterday. Clark County commissioners took no action on a plan to potentially increase the Clark County tax to grow, produce, or sell marijuana. Commissioners are looking to raise the tax to the maximum of 3%. Commissioners say that they will revisit the issue in July. The county approved a proposal to give close to $1.8 million to help of Southern Nevada. The services help the homeless and at-risk youth. Researchers at Mount Sinai say CBD could help people kick their heroin addiction. So interesting. It is a small study, but in the study, addicted patients were prescribed CBD meds. Researchers found patients had fewer cravings for heroin. They were also less anxious. Patients were given Epidiolex, which is already approved by the FDA, and that's meant to reduce seizures. A public television station in Alabama is refusing to air an episode of the children's show Arthur because it included a same-sex wedding. Well, the PBS show aired nationally last week, and in the episode, Arthur's teacher and his partner tie the knot. The director of programming says they decided to pull the episode because parents trust that their kids can watch the station without their supervision. This is not the first time the station has pulled an episode of Arthur. Back in 2005, Alabama Public TV did not air an episode featuring a character with two moms. A scandal rocking the New York Police Department. That's right, an officer accused of hiring a hitman to kill her estranged husband. The unique way investigators helped, or excuse me, kept him safe. The estranged husband of a New York City police officer is breaking his silence this morning. His wife, a cop, is accused of trying to kill him. Yeah, in today's GMA First Look, Kenneth Moten explains how police kept the estranged husband safe. It's the scandal rocking the NYPD. Officer Valerie Cincinnati stands accused of asking her boyfriend to hire a hitman to kill her estranged husband. This man, Isaiah Carvalho Jr. To be honest, I, I can't believe it. I'm still in shock. But instead of calling a hitman, authorities say Officer Cincinnati's boyfriend alerted them instead. They say they not only kept her husband safe, they also faked his death, hoping to build their case. This morning, in an ABC News exclusive, our TJ Holmes and the suspect's alleged target, one-on-one. -on -one. They had me sit in my car. They put glass on the floor and all over me and had me hunch over into the passenger seat. How difficult was that for you to do? It was absolutely insane. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll ask Isaiah Carvalho about his recovery process after suffering this frightening ordeal. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Incredible. Yeah, it is. Well, a new trend in the real estate industry, more and more people going online to sell their home. We're going to tell you the benefits of ditching your agent and turning to the Internet. You're watching Good Morning Las Vegas. It's a Wednesday morning. Oh, pause and take a look at that pretty sky.
Our Wednesday starts off with dry conditions here in Las Vegas, but I'm monitoring the chances of some rain today. We'll talk about when thunder showers are most likely next. A man speaking out after he's accused of fatally beating his wife with a bat, making shocking statements from jail. Why he's confessing to the crime. And later, why many people are choosing to ditch their real estate agents and sell their homes online. Good morning, Las Vegas. Good to have you with us. Yeah, I'm Dana Roselli, and we have a very busy weather day, an action alert day. Some rain on the way, Justin. That's the plan. We think even though it's going to remain dry for the next couple of hours, uh, rain will develop by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock this morning, so it could turn wet middle of the day through the afternoon here in Las Vegas. And we're going to be close enough uh, to an upper level storm system that a few spotty showers and thunder showers are also a possibility. Uh, again, not an all day long washout, but off and on downpours can't be ruled out from late morning right on through the afternoon into parts of the evening. Temperatures are going to have folks talking. It's in the 50s right now. I'm only expecting highs to jump back into the mid 60s. That is incredibly chilly air in place for this time of late May. Your 13 hour forecast is mostly cloudy. What to wear? I'd keep the sweatshirt handy all day long. Marissa, per perhaps, possibly the umbrella, even a good call as we slide into the afternoon. We'll time out a warm up in just a moment. Justin, thank you. We are just about to pull up to the airport here in North Las Vegas. Let me show you a look at these traffic conditions up here. Again, Decatur near the North Las Vegas airport. Once we get into Chopper 13, we'll keep an eye on the roads for you, but I do want to let you know I am seeing a deadly crash in Summerlin this morning. Police are asking that you avoid the residential streets around Fort Apache and Sahara. That's where the investigation is, but that major intersection is not impacted. Marissa, thank you. Today, a funeral will be held for the woman who police say was violently beaten by her husband with a baseball bat. Detectives say Sloban Milyush claimed his wife was having an affair, and he told police he couldn't take it anymore, so he went to a nearby Walmart last Friday to buy his weapon. When he got home, he told police he hit his wife multiple times while she was sleeping in their home near Sahara and Fort Apache. Milyush says his son came home, and he gave him $20 to leave. The son went and called police. We spoke with Milyush as he sat in custody. He expressed little remorse about his wife's murder, but he did show sadness about his kids. I love my kids always, you know, and hopefully they're going to be fine. Hopefully they're going to go over there. We're going to raise them nice. Well, the victim's family says he wanted, she wanted to divorce him. They've set up a GoFundMe account to support the couple's two sons. You can find a link at KTNV.com. An update now on a deadly fire at a Henderson home that never should have happened. Investigators say the man who died was using a propane torch to kill bugs. That man later died at the hospital. Well, the wet weather could also lead to an increased risk for wildfires this summer. The rain is helping vegetation grow, which is leading firefighters to monitor conditions around the valley. And up near Mount Potosi, they are training for the worst. Crews say that the key to these mock scenarios is working together. We need to know each other and know their strengths and weaknesses so that um, when it comes time to actually respond to an emergency, they know to put the right person in the right type of position. Well, crews say that the goal is to make sure that they are ready now so that when a life or death situation comes into play, they're going to be able to focus on that. Well, firefighters can't do it alone, so you can prevent wildfires by making sure that your car isn't dragging any chains causing sparks. Never throw cigarettes out of your window. Keep a bucket of water nearby if you're barbecuing or have a campfire and never fly a drone over a fire. While some states are tightening abortion restrictions, Nevada is loosening them. The assembly approved the Trust Nevada Women Act, which would no longer require doctors to tell a woman about the emotional implication of abortion. Doctors would also no longer have to ask about a woman's age or whether she was married. The law still needs to go through the Senate before heading to Governor Sisolak. House Democrats once again bringing up impeaching the president. Today, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will meet with the Democratic caucus to focus on maintaining oversight over the president and the executive branch. House Dems feel like many members of the president's cabinet have become defiant when it comes to subpoenas from Congress. 
Well, the Coast Guard has confirmed a third plane has crashed into the Prince William Sound in Alaska. It was carrying at least three people. Everyone was picked up by Good Samaritans, but as of this morning, no update on their conditions. Well, the crash comes one day after a passenger and a pilot of a float plane were killed in another crash and a week after two sightseeing planes crashed midair. Well, it seems just about everything is moving online, and that includes the process of buying and selling a home now. I buying is a big trend in real estate right now, especially for people who want to sell homes fast. For a fee that's slightly higher than an agent, around 7%, some online companies do everything a seller would usually do. Richard and Deborah Moniz wanted to rent their condo after their daughter graduated from UNLV, and they didn't want to spend time or money getting it ready for sale, so they used Zillow to sell it. And it was so easy. They called, they came out, they did an inspection, and they got back to us within a week, and they made our, their final offer, which was the same as what they said it would be. All you have to do is enter all the information about the home you want to sell online. If your home qualifies, the company offers you cash for it. You can even do it on a mobile phone. Here are some advantages of iBuying. The seller doesn't have to hold open houses. There are no random showings and no work or expense fixing up the home to get it ready for market. Wow, I, I get why that's appealing. Mm. We sold a house five years ago and I'm still <laughs> recovering yeah. from it. It's a hard. It is hard. Right? You've yes. been there too. Yeah. Oh. Well, more jobs are coming to North Las Vegas. Yeah, today the city expected to approve its $614 million budget, which includes funding for 52 full-time jobs. City leaders say that this marks the second year in a row. The budget is balanced and fully funded. Years ago, the city faced $152 million in deficit. Well, if you can't find time to see Lady Gaga at Park MGM, you can stop by her store inside the resort. The House of Gaga is looking to hire both full-time and part-time sales associates right now. There's listings online. The store will include fashion and beauty brands by the singer. We do have a link to apply for the open positions on our website, ktnv.com slash links. Well, Metro is going to honor the memory of two of its officers while helping several students right here in the Valley. The department's foundation will award 10 children the Allen Beck and Igor Soldo Memorial Scholarship tomorrow. The officers were ambushed while having lunch five years ago. Here's a look at last year's scholarship winners. Each student gets $5,000, and here's what we love about this scholarship that really makes it unique and special. All of the students are children of active duty officers. So awesome. we thank those kids for the sacrifices they make as well. If you see a first responder this week, be sure to say thank you. It is National EMS Week. Yeah, here in the Valley, first responders with Las Vegas Fire and Rescue respond to thousands of calls each year, and a large chunk of them are emergency medical calls. This year's theme of EMS Week is beyond the call because paramedics around the Valley are trained to respond to much more than small crashes or fires. Whether it's a fire, whether it's a motor vehicle crash, whether it's someone having chest pain. <clears throat> in, um, when we get on scene, uh, we assess that patient and take care of that patient, start stabilizing that patient. Well, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue says that there are a total of 53 paramedic emergency response units within the city. Next month, you'll get a chance to discover our state parks for free. In honor of Discover Nevada State Parks Day, all 23 state parks will be fee free. That includes Spring Mountain Ranch and the Valley of Fire if you want something that's close to home. So mark your calendars. It's Saturday, June 8th. A new lodge is coming to Lee Canyon. Take a look at the renderings. The Hillside Lodge will feature an outdoor heated terrace, a ski in and ski out bar, and two new dining options. This is the biggest undertaking at the resort since the ski area opened in 1964. The Hillside Lodge is set to open in December. Looks beautiful. Yeah. Well, lift riders in Las Vegas are getting a safety boost. The company rolling out new features to the app. They include rider emergency assistance, giving riders easier access to 911 within the app, and sexual harassment training for both riders and drivers. Lyft also plans to enhance some features to make it easier for riders to find their drivers and reach out to the company if they encounter any problems. Well, with the price of gas going up, Envy Energy is hoping that you will make the switch to electric cars. The cars not only cut down on carbon emissions, but they also save you money. And this weekend, Envy Energy is giving you a chance to test drive them for free. NV Energy is holding this event so customers will have the opportunity to touch and feel electric vehicles, be able to get behind the wheel, learn all the interesting facts. 
That's a good idea. 11 different models will be available to test drive this Saturday at NB Energy's main office from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., but you do have to register in advance. You can find more details on the website on your screen. A local woman is calling for your help. That's right. Now, she's working to find a kind person who returned her wallet. Hi. Um, I found a wallet in the middle of the street, and I'm returning it. The Aww. woman says she doesn't know how it fell out of her car, but she wants to reward the woman who you see in this video who returned it. She's grateful and says her faith in humanity has been restored. She doesn't know who, who this woman is. Yeah. So if you recognize her, give us a jingle. We want to hook those two up. It's a different kind of surveillance that we, yes. that we usually put on TV. Yes. Yeah, we want to find her for her kindness. <laughs> 540 now. We've seen the crash, but now we're getting a closer look at the escape. What happened seconds after a pilot ejected from a crashing plane? And a summer camp for YouTubers, the program that can help your kids learn the skills that they need to become a social media star. The forecast today feels more like February than late May. Highs only in the 60s. A slow climb through the 70s through the rest of the week. But hey, we're back in the mid 80s by this weekend. We'll time out some rain and storm chances in just a moment. For the morning commute, looks like some sunshine. A couple of clouds across the Las Vegas Valley. Another quick check of your forecast. Want to time out the rain chances that have caused us to issue a 13 first alert action day. Dry this morning, so hopefully a quiet Wednesday morning commute. Mostly cloudy out there, chilly in the 50s. As we head past 10 in the morning, that's when showers will fire, most likely near the mountains. But as we head into the afternoon, can't rule out a passing shower or thunder shower here in the valley. Great way to keep track of the rain and see if it's anywhere close to your neighborhood is by downloading the free KTNV app in your smartphone's app store. I use this when I'm away from the station. We'll talk more about our record cool temperatures, Beth and Dana, in a moment. Thanks, Justin. Dramatic video shows the moments a pilot ejects from a doomed F-16 jet in Riverside, Cali, California. Riverside County, California. This happened last Thursday. You see a burst of flame. There it goes, just as the pilot ejects. The jet then stays airborne for a moment before crashing into a warehouse. The military has not released a cause for the crash, but we do know the jet was carrying weapons. Those have since been destroyed. No one was seriously hurt. Wow, that could have been much worse. Mm -hmm. Well, police have released body camera video of officers responding to reports of an active shooter in Tulsa, Oklahoma earlier this month. The gunman injured two people at a restaurant and started running across the nearby freeway. Then an officer takes aim and fires across six lanes of traffic. Hold traffic. Hold traffic. He's got a gun. Okay, suspect is down. Stay on the ground! Stay on the ground! Let me see your hands! Wow, the suspect, 25-year-old Derek Shaw, did not survive that shooting. Investigators still don't know the motive. What an intense moment. Well, the investigation into a racist photo on the 1994, uh, excuse me, 1984 medical school yearbook page of Virginia Governor Ralph Northam is over, and the findings will be announced today. When the photo first surfaced, many were calling for Northam's resignation. The governor first apologized, you may remember, but then he later denied even being in the picture. He has promised to focus on issues of race and uh, for the rest of his term, really, the findings will be unveiled at a press conference later this morning. The Golden Arches are under fire. McDonald's workers in 20 cities have filed more than two dozen lawsuits saying they were sexually harassed on the job. Workers took to the streets yesterday. Multiple women say once they reported the behavior, they faced retaliation. In some cases, they were fired. They also cut my hours pretty much, so I'm working seven hours per week now. I used to work 25 hours, so it's making it impossible for me to um, feed my daughter or have child care. McDonald's CEO says change is coming. He says the company will be rolling out training for frontline employees and franchise operators and implementing a complaint hotline. Tomorrow, the man who became known as the American Taliban is expected to go free. John Walker Lind pleaded guilty after 9-11 to fighting for the terror group. He served 17 years of a 20-year sentence. Lind denounced terrorism when he was sentenced, but we haven't heard from him since. Once released, Lind won't be allowed to use anything but English online. 